I was born on May 6, 1936, the year of the infamous Berlin Olympics. I was born in Bad Nauheim, which is a small city of about 15,000 people, 20 miles north of Frankfurt. Uh, Bad Nauheim is, or was a world famous health resort uh, uh, during the first 20, 30 years of the 20th century. Empress, empresses, heads of state, and all kinds of notables came to Bad Nauheim to bathe in the unique salt water, which apparently is good for heart conditions and rheumatism. Uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, as a young boy, came to Bad Nauheim to uh, be with his parents there for about a half a year uh, when they went to what we call Kur, K-U-R, which is going into the uh, water. After the war, General Patton had his headquarters in my hometown, and the day he was uh, killed in, the, in an auto accident near Heidelberg, he was in fact living in my hometown. Uh, we lived in a small apartment in the back of a big apartment building, which was the lowest, uh, the cheapest place that my mother and father could find. And it, con it uh, consisted of a, a, a small kitchen uh, without obviously a refrigerator or even an ice box and it had a, a small living room and one bedroom and uh, my mother and sister and I shared the same bed because that was all. There was another room in the, uh, in the apartment but we had to share that with my uncle, his wife and his daughter because after the war there was no, uh, there was no uh, room left for anybody and therefore we all had to accept either relatives or strangers uh, to help them out. When the war, World War II broke out on September 1, 39, I was approximately three years old, and needless to say, I didn't have any feelings, in fact, uh, about that period. In fact, the earliest memories I have of my life is when I first went to school at the age of six, because in Germany, they give you a huge uh, container full of candy, and that kind of sticks in your mind. So that's really the first day I remember I was alive. Uh, the other time during that period was when my father came home from the war for a couple of days or weeks, I don't remember, and I was left-handed, which in Germany is an absolute no-no, and so he hit my hand so hard until I went from left-handed to right-handed, and ever since I can barely read my own handwriting, but that was just the, the system in Germany. I keep trying to remember uh, when my father went to war, if he was drafted, if he volunteered. Uh, that's kind of important to me to, to determine his mood and his allegiance to A, the party, or B, the country. But unfortunately, my mother is dead, and I never fail to ask her the question. It, it, it keeps bugging my mind uh, who he really was, but I have seen him maybe two, three times in my life and really have no idea, A, who he is, and uh, uh, what his whole philosophy about life was, except it wasn't uh, uh, easy because when you had to work in a hotel and you were a skilled tool and dry maker, that must have kind of uh, been painful on him. On him. Uh, but in my hometown, uh, it had no industry, and as a result of it, he couldn't get a job any place except the hotels, and the whole city was full of uh, hotels. And in, in, incidentally, the hotel side kept us from really being destroyed because there was nothing the Americans and the British could do to destroy uh, since there was no industry. We did, however, have five, roughly five bombings during the war and uh, uh, which uh, damaged a number of hotels, a number of homes, and a couple of bombs landed within 300 feet of my uncle's hotel in which we stood at that time. And uh, I remember to this day, as, as, as impossible as it sounds, the detonation and the explosion. It was frightening and exciting at the same time to see dozens and dozens of uh, uh, US B-17 bombers crossing over our town to unload their bombs in Frankfurt, which uh, was a major industrial center with approximately a half a million uh, people in it. And frequently, frequently they flew over our town completely un uh, being, uh, not being attacked. And, uh, and often we could see the intensity of the bombing that during daylight, I repeat daylight, the sky was red 
uh, uh, lit red. That's how intense the bombing was. Times and we were sleeping in here because we they'd awaken us at 4:30 that morning, and so we were tired. And there were times when we were just about sleeping, but then we'd wake up and realize, man, we're on top of the rocket. We're getting ready to go to the moon. And it'd get very exciting, and then we'd be uh, very alert, very keen. And uh, but then we'd drift off again. So it was from utter uh, reality uh, almost to a sleep condition as we were waiting for our liftoff. I tell people almost the happiest moment of my life to realize after all those years of training and preparation of education you know at last it was my turn at last I was leaving the earth going into the heavens going to the moon a place that I dreamed about visiting since I was a, a young boy and so me for me it was a very joyous moment in fact there were tears coming down my face uh, I guess tears just release of tension because the tensions had built there were so many times when I thought I would not be qualified to even participate in a journey and so it was a happy moment for me and for my family for the people of the world, really, to see Apollo 15 launch into space, because we were going to a very important destination on the moon. 10, 9, 8, ignition sequence start, engines on, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all engines running, launch commit, liftoff, we have liftoff at 9.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And we have a roll program. Thank you. You have good friends and I'll find it. Thank you, Toro. Roll from the Thank you. And we have a picture program. Thank you. down that's the third stage shut down and we were in orbit at about 120 miles above the earth we were at uh, you know orbital speed about 17,000 miles an hour and uh, so 12 minutes later we were weightless we were in orbit and we could see the uh, the beauty of the earth from that vantage point our first beautiful opportunity to see the earth as a complete object as a sphere in space occurred the afternoon after the launch it was such a remarkable sight that I called to my two colleagues I said Dave and Al come over and look at this you won't believe it and the three of us looked out there and you know just amazed to see the earth it reminded me of a Christmas tree ornament but a very fragile Christmas tree ornament. It seemed like there should have been a cord attached to it something beneath the hole but there was nothing you know just hanging majestically in space suspended in space and it seemed so very fragile that if I could just reach out and just touch it, that the whole thing would just crumble and fall apart. So it was a very, a very touching moment to see the Earth from that perspective. Once we're safely on the journey to the moon, then we, uh, you know, we connect to the lunar module and extract it from that third stage, the S4B, and then. At a convenient time, we get into it and check it out to make sure everything's working properly. Well, it took us three days to reach the moon. It's not until we get in a lunar orbit that we transfer, move all of the equipment that we will need for our journey to the surface of the moon. And then we changed our orbit. We went down into a low orbit so that we would be closer to the surface. And then at the right time, we uh, fired the, the descent engine that would gradually slow us down and we would come in for a very precise minus landing. Minus one, six percent fuel. Ten feet, minus one. Eight feet, minus one. Contact. 
I always had difficulty coming through the hatch. It didn't seem large enough. 